TSS 8000 cars, and today in the drive we have the Jaguar F-Type. Now I'm a fan of the F-Type, now it's been around since 2013 so it's not brand new, and in some ways the driving um, experience shows this, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But just in terms of the styling, I've always been a massive fan of the F-Type. I think it's very purposeful, very wide at the front, and quite angular at the rear, and it looks like a true coupe should. Easy to park in spaces because it's short, but you have to be a bit careful that it is quite a wide car, and, and that comes with some disadvantages as well. Now, the F-Type range has expanded uh, for 2018, or I think with the introduction in 2017, of the F300, um, which is effectively a similar engine to the, the Golf R, and it's a turbocharged unit, so it's a four-cylinder engine. A lot of people said that wasn't appropriate in, the, in a Jag at the time, but I have heard that it's extreme, it's extremely good engine, and it, it does actually endow the, the Jag with plenty of performance. Um, obviously, it's turbocharged rather than being supercharged. Now, then you have the P340, which is a six-cylinder engine, supercharged six-cylinder engine, with producing four, 340 PS, as the name suggests. And then you have the P380S, which is a new engine that sits above the six-cylinder, still a six-cylinder engine, producing 375 brake or 380 PS, as the name would suggest. And I think the advantage of the supercharger unit is of course it's on song the whole time so the power is instantly available when you're driving it it's easy to drive even if you're in the wrong gear power just comes in there's no delay like you get in a turbocharged unit is its weight, over 1600 kgs in what is meant to be a fairly compact super sports car. However, when you move up to the 5 litre V8 producing 545 brake horsepower, 42 brake horsepower as I mentioned, really the weight is not an issue. There is plenty of power in this car to really make it go. Now I've driven it for four or five days now, um, using it as my everyday transport, and there's tons of power all the time. After this version, you, you have the, the F-Type SVR, which is obviously their special vehicles operation department, SVO, and they fettled the engine really to produce 575 HP, so I think 567 BHP. And I am sure it gives the car more power, but ultimately it's an extra 25 brake horsepower, which I'm not sure you'd notice. But again, I haven't driven the SVR, so I'll have to reserve judgment until I do. It's sitting on 20 inch standard alloys and as usual, people are not that careful of <laughs> curbs with, with these cars. But I think it's got nice lines, and you can see you have an air intake into the engine compartment at the side here with Jaguar in letters below, which I, I quite like actually, and that is in a contrast black to the, to the metallic grey of this car. I think the metallic grey actually suits the car quite nicely. One of the options with the, the F-Type, which I think I would go for if I was choosing the car is the glass sunroof which would mean that you actually had the contrast between the grey here and the black on the on the roof of the car. It would also make the inside of the car a bit more airy which we'll show you further into this video. Now when the F-Type was introduced it was introduced as a convertible unusually actually I think most people tend to introduce their hardtops and then a convertible comes afterwards. A bit like with the McLaren 720S, McLaren have just announced their 720S Spider, which came 
I'd say a couple of years after the 720S, or almost a couple of years after the 720S. So that's the normal. But I think in the F-Type, the coupe is the better looking of the two cars. And I'm not saying that the convertible doesn't look good, I think it does. And of course the advantage of the convertible is you get much more of the noise from the exhaust into the cabin, because it's a soft top, or especially if you have the roof down. But the lines of the, of the coupe here, I think are really stylish. And five years into the, the build of F-Types, I just think that's really, still a really, really good looking car. Now they've added to the, the 1718 model, the rear spoiler, which apparently is supposed to increase the downforce on the car by, by, by a margin. And the spoiler on the SVR is e even bigger. But this is, this is standard. What I also like about the car is, I think it's an aggressive rear diffuser with the twin pipes either side. On the three litre version, you actually have the twin pipes in the sort of the central part of the, the rear of the car. The five litre comes as standard with the side skirts to control the airflow around the car. But I'd say, you know, this is a, a pretty much a back to basics car, the F-Type. I've always thought of the F-Type as the British version of the Mustang. Not so sophisticated as some machines out there, but a real bruiser and extremely pleasant to drive. So in the way of an American hot rod, really, you know, it's a, a lot of power going to the rear wheels. Although, this car, of course, is all-wheel drive, where 40% of the power can be allocated to the front wheels as the computer deigns it necessary. And again, you know, the lights are full LED lights, nicely curved into the, the body shape of the car. Really like that. And I really like the front of the car. I think with the air intakes into the, on the, the front bonnet, I think it looks just spectacular. And if you have that coming up behind you at speed, I suspect you're, um, you're going to do a double take on it. And I like the Jaguar badge at the front as well. And then quite subtle, the R. The SVR has a whole new body kit on the car, which I personally don't like. I much prefer the body kit on this. You've got the extended front splitter, which I think is nice, obviously, to increase the downforce. Obviously, there's a fair amount of gap in the front grills to allow air to go through to the radiators. And as I pointed out earlier, it comes as standard with, I'd say, quite a subtle side skirt. They're really smart, and I, I, I just, I like the, I like, I like it very much, I really do. So, standard key, so to open it, we press it once, to open all the doors, we press twice, and immediately the door handles are offered up to you. Which you, and they don't actually go away again until I lock the car. Okay, but the second that I unlock it, they come out to you. So one of the nice features, a bit like I, I found with the Range Rover Velar, was obviously they don't get dirty in here. So even if you've been driving 400 miles and on muddy, muddy roads, the actual handles themselves are still clean, which is quite nice. I quite like that. It's quite a nice touch. So we'll cover the, the inside later. But what I will ask Cara to do is just have a quick look here. You can see how high the parcel shelf is. Really not practical to put anything on. So I suppose, you know, maybe that's an Achilles heel of the car. It would have been better if that had been a bit lower. On our GT4, of course, there was an excuse in the GT4 because, of course, the engine was mid-engine, so it was below the parcel shelf. But the parcel shelf was usefully low, so you could put stuff on it. Coming round to the boots. The boot's quite a decent size. And again, it really in keeping with this type of car, ev everything seems to be electric. You know, we've got an electric boot release. And there's quite a lot of room in here. It goes quite well forward. And there are some stowage points underneath the bodywork, the rear three-quarter bodywork at the side. And then push the button. 
and it closes nicely up. That's uh, smart, and I, I think in keeping with the car. Yep. So we're opening up here. Uh, boot roof is down in the passenger's footwell. One of the things I do like, which I'm, I'm just going to point out now, is because it's easier to see with the door open, is I like the design of the door. It's sort of sculptured round like this. And I, I think that's rather smart. Makes it slightly more interesting inside rather than it just being straight. It lifts from this side. Okay, so we have the five litre V8. Unfortunately, one of the traits in modern day cars is not to show the engine in any way, so we just get a plastic cover. Sometimes if you're buying a Ferrari, you can have, a, um, you can have that in carbon fiber, but hmm, it doesn't really look particularly fantastic. But then I suppose it's uh, protected from the dirt and grime that comes into the engine compartment. We have primary radiators at the front, in front of the engine, and you can see there are these braces here which obviously to, to hold the car as rigidly together as it possibly can. Because again, it's not a light car. One of the things that I have noticed with this car is the engine is not set back as far as you quite often get in modern sports and supercars if they're front engine. So um, with the Ferrari FF that we had and certainly with the GTC4 Lusso that replaced it, the engine would be set right back into the bulkhead here. So it becomes a front mid-engine car. So the engine is set behind the front wheels. Let me put that down. Fits into place nicely. I think that is really the, the outside of the car. I, I, I hope you agree with me that it's, I think it's a really smart looking machine. Now we've done a driving video of the car and I've talked about all the electronics so that'll appear one of the videos that we're going to uh, put live on the car. So I think we'll move to the inside. chairs in here you would be quite close to your passenger despite the width of the car. The other thing about the inside of the car which makes it feel maybe a little more claustrophobic than you might like is the the shallow nature of the front screen. There really is it's a bit in some ways a bit like the Mercedes AMG GTS or the GTR. The front of the of the roof is well forward instead of with I think with a lot of cars certainly in the Panamera the screen would start from way back here. So that's an issue. Otherwise, it's a nice environment. I mean, it's all, I think you get the premium leather in the five litre V8, so it's all lovely and soft and it's across here. And some hard points, but the, the points where you'd normally have maybe carbon fibre in a car, it, it's, I think it's nicely smoked, the smoked um, metal here, which I think is quite nice. But uh, other than that, everything is, is covered in pretty much covered in leather and it's a nice environment. I do think that the nylon roof lining would be nicer if it was in either leather or Alcantara and probably in keeping with the the sort of the Jag history you know I think the the XJ's that you always used to buy used to have leather roof lining. But also you probably see these struts here so we have it's I don't think it's a roll cage but obviously they are supporting, supporting the, the, the chassis, I suspect, and probably drilled into the chassis. So as a consequence, it makes the car quite, feel quite rigid, which is a good thing. 
You know, I like I like a car that, that, that doesn't bounce around and is very connected to the road. I have to say, the inside on the entertainment side and the infotainment side is a little dated, I feel. It's all touch screen sensitive, which is quite nice, but it's nothing like as sophisticated as the infotainment center on the Panamera. But everything is here. You have your toggles for your dynamic. So in dynamic, in JAG terms, that, that means hardening your settings um, or putting it into, into wet mode. Um, you've obviously got your, your, your start stop button there and you've got your parking brake exhaust and um, traction control systems here. You know, it's, it's nicely laid out. One of the things I do like about the car is the fact that you have a heated screen, front screen. That's not so common in cars. I know the Range Rovers, um, Land Rover have them. It all works fine, but I think, I think you know, compared to the latest version, I mean, I've certainly on the Porsche, as I mentioned, but also on the new Mercedes infotainment center is, is just, is right up there with the Porsche. Um, I haven't seen BMW's latest infotainment center at this point in time, but we know Audi are right up there uh, in terms of the latest technology as well. It's a fairly basic layout, but you can pull a bit of information up onto the central screen between the rev counter and the speedometer. And you have paddle shifts that are small, but perfectly located to be able to change gear. And I think it's questionable as to whether you, you would use them, I think, for relaxed GT mode driving, because this is really the consummate GT. You would have the, um, the car in full auto. Another issue, perhaps, with the, with the car is, although the automatic transmission is lovely when you're driving, it may be not gently, but you're not racing around the country lanes, it's a little slow-witted, I felt, when, um, when you're actually driving quickly. The gearbox has a sport function, which of course does quicken up those gear changes. But when compared to the best of the, the twin clutch systems that are out there, like for example the PD, PDK system on the GT3, it really is a generation or two behind. And I think, you know, hopefully when they, we get our first real update of the F-Type model, because this is the, the first F-Type that was introduced, and although we've had a few new releases, they've tended to, to have been minor changes rather than being a major overhaul of the car itself. Uh, it's a nice environment and I took it yesterday afternoon on a Sunday we took it down to to Midhurst which is a sort of 40 50 miles and in that type of role it's, it's terrific corners well corners really faithfully very little ro roll again as I, I mentioned when I was driving it has a dynamic and adaptive dampers so it keeps the car very very flat on cornering you sometimes get the feel that there's masses of amount of power even although it has standard limited slip differential that will overcome the rear end so you have to watch that slightly um, that's a surprising trait at lower speeds than i would expect of for an all an all-wheel drive car because you really would expect if there's any slippage detected at the rear that power to go to the front um, it, it does but it's you, not so you wouldn't notice, you'd, you'd know that the, because the back end will step out slightly. And that's with all the traction control systems operating. It's a very fast car. You know, in a straight line, uh, this car would, would stay with, I suspect, the, the GT3 we have up to about 70 or 80. But again, because you run out of revs, really before 7,000 revs, I feel the GT3 would pull away as it reaches the higher levels of the rev range. Once you get to about 90 in the car, it sort of seems to hit a brick wall. Overall, would I recommend the F-Type, the Jaguar F-Type 5 litre V8? Well, strangely enough, I would, but I think I was buying the F-Type, I would go for the six-cylinder version. 
I mean, I quite like the six cylinder has the huge two middle exhaust, which I quite like. Makes the diffuser look a little less aggressive, I accept. But I think that's got dis distinctive looks. And also, I think that the noise that the six cylinder engine makes, again, supercharged the six cylinder engine, is, is very nearly as good as this. And certainly, although I haven't driven the six cylinder, I've been in my friend's six cylinder F type, I'd say it's very nearly as quick. Not that you'd notice. Maybe, maybe slightly higher up the, as you get up towards 70, 80, maybe this would start to pull away. But in essence, I would say it's, um, it may be worth, if you're thinking of an F type, have a look at the P380 first and see what you think. Um, because it's usefully um, about 20 grand less than this. Uh, this comes in at, starts at £92,000 and um, it's still quite a lot of car for the money but it's, I'd say, ready for an upgrade is the way that I put it. But I, I enjoyed it and it's lovely to drive at 7 tenths in full automatic mode. OK guys, well I'm, I'm hoping you found that useful. It's Ian at SS8000 Cars signing off. Look forward to seeing you at the next video. Thanks.